What's up guys, my name is Marshall Mosier. I'm one of the ambassadors for Air Italy and today I want to talk about one of the best electric motors on the market, the EPG21. There's all kinds of reasons to switch from a gas to an electric paramotor and I'll talk about those later in the video, but for right now I want to go over some of the features of the EPG and how to operate this machine. So the electric paramotor called the EPG21 is a beast when it comes to power. It has 87 kilograms of static thrust and two different battery options options, one that gives you about an hour flight time and this one which gives you 80 minutes of flight time. But in addition to the fact that it has the highest flight time of any electric motor on the market, it's also IP67 rated waterproof. So that's both the battery, the motor, and the controller, which is a wireless controller, which is pretty amazing, which wirelessly connects to the battery and if you're worried about wireless connection don't be this thing can work even when it's really really far from the motor and uh, we've actually done tests where we put this in a bucket of water and it still works so even the water won't block the signal so really strong wi-fi based signal um, and you don't have to worry about a cable dangling you also have all the information of the epg that is displayed on the screen and you have cruise control. I'm gonna go over that in a little bit, but the fact that this is wireless and waterproof is one of my favorite things about it. So the way that we use this machine is pretty simple, a lot easier than a gas motor. The first thing that we do is we do our pre-flight check, which is a little bit different for an electric motor. I'm not gonna go over that. Um, you should learn about that in your um, uh, flight lessons. But after you do your pre-flight check, you make sure the battery is plugged in which is this adapter right here. And then I put it on before I turn it on, <clears throat> but this is the button that turns the motor on. So one of the dangerous things with electric motors is that you might not know it's on and it could be on. So if someone's back by the, um, by the prop and you accidentally hit the throttle because you don't have the noise of a gas motor, you might not know it's on when it's on. So I just keep that off until I'm ready to fly. So what I do is with the throttle on my hand, and obviously I don't have a wing right now, but I'm just gonna show you how to put the motor on and how to operate it. I sit down, put it on my shoulders, lean forward, stand up. And then the first thing I do after I'm connected to the wing, so obviously I don't have a wing right now, and after I uh, connect my leg straps, which I'll just show you really quick how to do that. Really easy system. One, two, and three. And then you have a chest strap right here as well. So once you're all connected into the motor and have your wing set up, that's when I turn on the motor. So I like to keep it off until I'm ready to go. So I take my left hand, I reach back here, and I press this button one time, which sometimes it takes a little bit of, right there. So you can feel that button even without looking at it. I can just press that one time. Now the motor is gonna turn on. The controller is still, actually the controller is on, but you can turn this off. You can turn it on after you turn the motor on. And then when you hear that do 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 do, that means that the battery is on and connected to the throttle. So I obviously look around me, say clear prop, pull the throttle and it spins up. But when you're not pulling the throttle, it's completely quiet, which is one of the coolest things, my favorite thing about electric pair motors is that you reduce the noise a lot. Of course, there is still prop noise, but it's a lot lighter noise than the engine running. And when you're not pressing the throttle, the engine is completely quiet, which is pretty amazing. So you can use it to get some altitude and then release the throttle. And it almost feels like this feeling of free flight um, obviously a little bit different because with motors you have a different type of uh, harness than free flight, but it's as close you can get to free flight with a motor, which is pretty amazing. So when you hit this throttle, you can see these numbers. Right now the number says zero as I hit the throttle. So now it's at 14%, 20%, and then the batteries are right there on the left. So right now we've flown this for about 30 minutes already today and it's still over 50% battery left, which are the bars on the left. Oh, it's okay. Well, apparently phones don't work on this kind of screen, but on the right, it says the percentage, and on the left, it has your battery percentage, and the smaller numbers on the top give you the uh, connection of the controller to the motor itself. Oh, uh, yeah, that's all right. 
<laughs> so there you go. That's all there is to it. And of so course, cool. you know, zero noise when I'm not hitting the throttle. So, so, I love it. Super cool. It also has cruise control too. So as you're flying, you can use this trigger to set the cruise control. So you don't have to have your hand on the throttle all the time. Like for instance, certain wings like uh, flying the moustache with the motor and my hands being on the, the brake toggles that have like the T-bars, I like to use the cruise control so I don't have to constantly be holding this uh, at a certain um, percentage and I can set the cruise control to whatever I want. So when I land and I'm ready to pack up, I wanna make sure that I don't accidentally hit this and forget the motor's on. So the first thing that I do is I turn my controller off. Hold that down. Now it's powered off. And you're gonna hear the motor beeping at me. So whenever you hear that motor beeping, that means it's on, but not connected. And then I reach with my right hand back, I hold the power button for three seconds, release it, and then it'll turn the battery off and be completely off. And that's really all there is to it. I also wanna show you how to disassemble this motor because it's so easy to take the cage off and you can fit it in even the smallest vehicles uh, in about 10 minutes. So let's do that. So after you've landed and you wanna fit this in your car and you don't have a mount on the back, it's super simple to take the cage off, take the propeller off and have all that done in about 10 minutes. So here I'm gonna show you how. First thing I do is I take my wireless controller, I'll take the little carabiner, and you can put this wherever you want, but I like to hook it right here on the shoulder strap and then tuck it into this with these two bungees that are holding the harness and the seat back up so it's nice and clean. Second thing I do is I come around here to the back and I disconnect the power. Pull that off. And then there is a Velcro strap back here holding the battery on. So what I do is I disconnect that Velcro strap by coming around to the other side. I also have these flotation systems on the side, by the way, if you're wondering what these are. This is a CO2 powered inflation system on the right and left of the motor that will auto activate when water is um, triggered into the system. So if I were to land in water, the life, uh, life vest flotation system would come out. They kind of get in the way, but they're not too bad. So take this battery off. You reach your hands back here, disconnect that, and then there's these two little bolts right here, if you can see that. So all I do is I flip that up, turn that to the left, nice. and take that off. Cool. And then do it on the other side. And then you'll see from the back, once I turn that, Whoa. that just falls out like that. Yep. And it's good to take the prop and make sure that it doesn't hit that like I just did. But the battery, it will just rest there, right there, like that. Uh, make sure you don't lose these. So I'll put those in my back pocket. And then the battery will just lift out like that. And that's all there is to it. Once you have the battery out, you can easily carry this back to your car and um, you can plug this in. The fast charger will charge this battery in about three hours. You can also get two batteries. So if you wanna fly for uh, a much longer flight, similar to a gas motor, you can have two batteries where you swap, you land, swap it, and then you have uh, closer to the flight time of a gas motor. So once you take the battery off, you put that down. Now the motor is super light. I mean, I can lift it with one hand, which is pretty amazing. And one of my favorite parts about electric motors as well. The way we take this cage off is we start with these Velcro straps. There's three of them, similar to a regular cage. So one, two, and three. And then there's two Velcro straps at the bottom. Take those out. Uh, before I disconnect these, the netting is attached with this system, which is really easy to take off. All you do is you take this lever, you lower it down like that, spool it all the way out, disconnect this carabiner, put the carabiner through the frame, which with my flotation, I just have to undo this one Velcro strap right here. If you don't have the flotation, it comes out quite easily. And then this piece goes right through that. Just like that, I redo my flotation. And then I can take off these two carabiners. And 
then from there, I can start taking the cage apart. So I start with the bottom, I pull that out, and then I pull the frame out of these studs, and I go around, do it one at a time. Sometimes those poles will fall out. Just like that. And there you go. This piece comes off like that. And then I can set this down right here for now. And then I'm gonna take out these frame struts. And these just pop right out. And then one other thing that I really like about this motor and the way they've designed this cage is every now and then the cage gets banged on things or maybe when you're loading it in the car or on your trailer hitch, it might get pushed around a little bit. The first thing that's gonna break with the way that this cage and this mount is designed are these little end pieces called fuses. And you can actually see with this one right here, I do have a break in it like that. And that is intentional because these little plastic pieces are very cheap and easy to replace. So whenever you have a force applied to the frame that might actually bend the aluminum, before it bends the actual metal part of the frame, it just breaks this little plastic piece. And you can get a bunch of these, I think I have like 20 of them, and you can easily replace them. They're called cage fuses, and it protects the metal part of your frame from any damage or bending that's hard to fix. So that's a really nice piece. Um, so once we have that off, this, disconnects into four pieces. I take that off like that. There is a, an option to get a cage that disconnects into, I believe it's six pieces. And that way it's a bit easier to fit into a travel bag. Uh, but this is the four piece option. And it fits all together like that. So if you are traveling on a plane, unfortunately you have to carry this on because this doesn't fit in a check bag, but there is a bag that all this can go in and you can carry it on a plane. It's totally fine with TSA, although they will ask you what it is and you know, maybe it's a good opportunity to show them some of your paramotor videos. Uh, but yeah, there is a six piece version of this which will fit in the travel bag. So once you have that all taken apart and disconnected, the last piece is the propeller. So this is a three blade system from EPROP. You'd also have a two blade system as well. And the way it's mounted is with a single bolt mounting system. So all you have to do is you take this pin out, you put the Allen wrench in there, and I don't have the Allen wrench right now, so I'm not gonna do it. But all you do is you take that Allen wrench out, you take this red piece off, and the propeller just pops off. Super simple, really quick, and you can do it in a few minutes. And then once you have the propeller off, the whole thing is really small and can fit in the back trunk of any kind of car, um, even if you're tight on space. And that's all there is to it. Obviously, when you put the propeller back on, always make sure you put this pin back in before you fly. The single mount system is really nice, but also not required. You can get the, um, the normal system that has, I think, what, two, four, six, eight screws. Uh, six screws, sorry. Uh, but I really like the ease of the single blade system. And then the whole motor is really just this brushless electric motor and there's really not much maintenance to it. One of the things that I was frustrated about with gas motors is in order to be a paramotor pilot, I kind of had to learn how to be an engine mechanic for a two-stroke engine. But now with an electric motor, there's very few moving parts. It's way less vibration, way less maintenance. And when it works, it works. So you're a lot less worried about engine failures, uh, which give you the opportunity to fly in a way that might not be as, um, uh, as comfortable uh, when you're worried about the potential of an engine failure. Of course, you can always have an engine failure with any motor, so obviously fly in the way that is safest for you, but I'm a lot more confident that I'm not gonna have an engine failure on an electric motor. Of course, I can run out of battery, and you wanna make sure that doesn't happen, but this does give me a lot more peace of mind when flying low over terrain that I don't want to land on. And that's the EPG-21.